Hi YouTube, I'm Iman. Welcome back to one of my auto repair videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove the inverter cover from a 2004 to 2009 uh, Toyota Prius. Now, there are a few reasons why you would want to remove the inverter cover. Uh, maybe you want to access something in the inverter. Uh, for example, the cables back here. There is there's a cable right here that requires you to take it off so you can take out the bolts. Or you might want to access something right here. Or you might have to take off the entire inverter, uh, which we're not going to get into right now. Or you might have to access something in the back, like the brake lines. So we actually removed the inverter cover as part of a separate, much longer video. So we're just doing a shorter video in order to compensate for that, in case you just need to remove the cover. Now let's get into it. And the first thing you should know, actually you should know two things, is that first off, you should disconnect the battery because the inverter is 200 volts and it can kill you if you touch it. Uh, so I have another separate video on that, but we might show just the uh, clips of how to disconnect the battery here as well. Uh, the second thing is that you have to move the windshield cowl. And we also have another separate video on that, so go check that out as well. So before we continue, let me just take a step back here. So in any normal case, when you're working with a high voltage inverter, uh, before you disconnect any cables uh, like we did here, you want to check for voltage. So in order to do that, we have to take off the cover and right now we're going to show you how to do that. So we're going to take our little walkie and we're going to count the number of volts here. This one's special right now, so we're going to leave that for alone right now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve volts and one special lock that we have to take out. So I think it's a number ten. We just so we're going to take off the cover first. And then we're going to use a special tool to check for voltage. And then we'll go on from there. Wait. Okay. Make sure I don't lose this. And then speed this up. So like I said, there's a special lock right here, and you just take a star-shaped screwdriver, take it out, and I think, is this matching me in the right direction? Okay. So just make sure it's fixed in there. And I think I can just take it out using my hand. There we go. This final, I think it's a screw instead of a bolt, is taken out. This one has a washer too, so make sure you take that out. And make sure you don't lose it. There we go. Now we can take off the cover. All right, is there anything here? Okay. All right, moment of truth. Do we have to take off these two bolts too? All right. So it might not have been as easy as it looked like when I took it off, but as you see right here, there is a rubber gasket lining the entire thing. So there might be a bit of suction when you try to take it off. And also when you take it off, you're going to notice that there's going to be a... You're going to notice that there's going to be like a sort of a guide notch for alignment. That you're going to have to finagle around to take it off. And after that, you should be able to take off the cover. So let me set this aside. Alright, so when we're checking for voltage, we're going to be checking using these three bolts right here. They have pins in them. And I know I said I we used a special tool to check for voltage, but really, we're just using a multimeter. So this is my brother Azami's favorite tool. So me, I'm, begrudg I'm begrudgingly using this. Uh, however, it's a very useful tool. Uh, don't quote me on that, uh, in front especially in front of Azami. But what we're going to do, since this is a 200 voltage inverter, is we're going to test for it using the 200 voltage setting. 
uh, make sure it's plugged in. And while you're wearing rubber gloves and making sure you're not touching any of these components down here, you want to test for voltage. So uh, test using uh, two different pins. Uh, we're going to see that it's zero. Test using these two, still zero. And testing using these last two, zero. Uh, so just to make sure there's nothing residual left, we're going to set it to 20. And still, there's nothing. So nothing, oh, nothing, and nothing. I mean, you can also check using these down here, but those three up there are just enough. Uh, just to make sure that this multimeter works, I'm just going to set it to 20. And then we're just going to check it on this battery here. It's already on. Oh, sorry. Alright, so in order to make sure that our multimeter is working, we're just going to make sure that we test it on this battery here. So red goes to red and black goes to black. And as you can see, we're at 20 volts right now, but this says 12 volts. And since this is a 12 volt battery, that, make, that means that the multimeter is working. You know, just, just to make sure it works. All right, so now that we know that there's no voltage, we just put this right here. We're going to be able to remove these three pins because these three bolts uh, have pins that keep the, this cable in place. So let me get the Milwaukee. All right, so use our trusty Milwaukee. Uh, I think these are 10 and I already tested them to make sure they're 10. And we're going to unscrew them. Make sure it's fixed on. Wait, I need to make sure it's spinning in the right direction. Okay. Make sure I don't touch any of these electrical components. And probably you should do this with rubber gloves, but this is disconnected, so I don't have to fear for my life. All right, so these three, we're gonna set them aside. And now, let me just check. It. So we're gonna remove these two bolts as well. Let me just check if they're 10. All right, so they're 10. You might wanna use a ratchet for this, but I have faith in my Milwaukee. We're just gonna see if it's gonna fit. All right. Okay, so yeah, we have to use a ratchet for this because I don't wanna hit it onto the electric components. Let me see if it works here. Okay. All right, so we loosened it a little bit uh, and, we and then after that we can use the Milwaukee and I know the Milwaukee has a special feature where you can manually uh, unscrew it, but I don't. I just want. I just want to make sure I don't uh, hit the electrical components. So that's what the bolts look like. And let's see if we're able to take off the uh, cable now. All right. So it looks like it should go through gently. I said gently, and that is what the cable looks like. Three prongs, that's pretty cool. All right, so we took off the cover for two reasons. Uh, first off was to check for voltage, and second off was to remove this cable. Uh, by the way, set that aside after. And since those two functions are done now, we're going to make sure that we don't touch this or damage this electrical component right here by putting the cover back on, because right now, make sure that we put it on gently. Because right now, we're going to be turning our attention to these cables back here. So that being said, let's tackle all these cables. So first off, we're going to tackle these two orange cables at the top here. So you notice that they have these buttons that right here that loosen them. And what you want to do is you want to take a flathead. Uh, or if you have enough strength, you could probably pull it out by yourself. But if you don't, then take a flathead screwdriver, push down, and just sort of wedge it in between. Like, in between the screw and the cable is fine. And as you press, just sort of leverage it out. There we go. That's what it looks like. There's also one below it. Same deal. We have to make sure that we're especially careful that we don't break it because it's cold right now. So these parts might be brittle. Okay, 
There we go. So these are the two cables. Another thing is that as opposed to the regular battery, which grounds out to the car, the inverter is a loop, which means it doesn't ground out to anything. So touching it could potentially kill you. And you can already see here that a wire is potentially exposed. And when you're working on this car, make sure to just as a precaution to wear rubber gloves. Uh, but since this car had, we take out, we took out the, we disconnected the battery about two, about a few days ago. Uh, there's no voltage left in it, so I'm allowed to touch it. But just make sure that you're safe while doing this. Let me show you this tool right here. So this detects uh, voltage or current. Uh, for example, it detects alternating current. And let me show you, even when the car is off, it's still gonna detect some power, but this the car has been off for a long time, so it might have discharged already. Oh, there it is.